Given him is a poison, it's something which is really disastrous. There's no way we can help. Yes, we are a profitable industry, and we have to be to be able to make sure that we're here today and tomorrow. Five million people have died already, and it means there's a lot that's still going to die. Cape Town, South Africa. Freed from apartheid, the people have good reason to celebrate. But this new freedom is threatened by the escalating AIDS problem. More than four and a half million South Africans are infected with HIV, no less than a quarter of the population. South Africa is at the top of the world list of countries struck by AIDS. This is Bongiwe and her daughter Busi. Bongiwe is 26. She lives in Kailicha, one of the townships around Cape Town. When she was expecting Busi, she found out that she was HIV positive. Since I heard this news that I am positive, I decided to leave everything because I had no hope that what is the use of being a student or studying for a degree while I'm going to die. Further down in Kailicha, we find Mafundo. Just like Bongiwe, she's 26 and HIV positive. Maybe in five years or two years to come, uh, you won't be talking to Nofundo again. There will be no Nofundo, you see. So those are the things that I always sometimes think, but I don't want to frustrate myself and think a lot about them because uh, the stress, I'll be stressing myself and the stress is the first enemy of the virus, you see. Africa is not only afflicted by AIDS, there are also the neglected diseases, such as typonosomiasis or sleeping sickness, a deadly disease that was virtually eradicated in the late 60s, but that is back again, striking harder than ever before. The hospital in Umogo, a remote village in the northeast of Uganda. People come a long way to be tested for sleeping sickness in this hospital. William is one of them. He's 13 and has just arrived with his father. Sleeping sickness is not easy to diagnose. It requires a number of tests to identify the parasite. Don't worry, it's not painful. I'll just go slow, okay? It's not painful, okay? and the tests establish proof. William is infected with sleeping sickness even at a far advanced stage. Patients who do not get a timely treatment slip into a coma and inevitably die. William and his father go back home to pick up his things. He'll return to the hospital to undergo three weeks treatment, a treatment with an archaic drug that is not without its risks. Bongiwe used to live in Durban. When she found out that she was pregnant, she and her boyfriend had a fight. Afraid to tell her family that she was HIV positive, Bongiwe fled to Cape Town and moved in with her sister. She's lost contact with her daughter's father, who doesn't know that Bongiwe is infected. Her sister doesn't know either. That's why we interview Bongiwe outside the house. He doesn't know anything about his child and I also hate him because I believe he's the one who infected me. So I really hate him. I hate him. Before uh, I had a sexual intercourse with him, I told him for several times to go for an HIV test and he always refused. Why was he refusing if he didn't aware of anything? It's because he knew that he already infected but he wanted to infect me so that he can't die alone. That's what they always say, that I can't die alone. What worries me is that as he is in heaven, he still has other relationships and he keeps on infecting the other people. 
Besides being a threat to public health, AIDS also has an enormous impact on the economy and development of a country, tearing families apart. Parents fall ill, unable to carry on with their jobs. Ten years ago, less than 1% of the population in Kailitsha Township was HIV positive. Today, more than 20% are infected. Eric Gumara, a doctor who works in this township, looks upon the situation with sorrow. The treatment of patients with AIDS is very frustrating. We treat them only for the so-called opportunistic diseases, mainly fungi diseases and tuberculosis. Various diseases appear because of the weakened immune system of the patients. So we treat them for those diseases, but of course we want to do more by giving them what they are giving them in Europe, in the rich countries, triple drug therapy, the antiretrovirals, but the antiretrovirals are a different problem, a problem of cost. For us doctors, it is unacceptable to know this and to see our patients further deteriorate in time. Even if we treat the opportunistic diseases, we see our patients die whilst we know that there is a treatment available. Even though antiretrovirals, the drugs that slow down the disease, are effective, most of the HIV patients in the poor countries cannot afford them, as they cost $10,000 per patient every year. Generic or brand-free versions of the drugs are up to 100 times cheaper. The pharmaceutical companies intend to cut out these competitors, using their patent right to prevent the access to cheap generic drugs. There has to be a realistic expectation of where it is industry's duties begin and where they end, but also a realistic expectation of where government responsibilities begin and where they end as well. Um, but certainly we are very aware of the fact that there is enormous suffering in the developing world. We are very aware of the fact that traditionally um, the market principles that we rely on for supply and demand um, would appear in some instances not to work uh, uh, um, for the developing world diseases. But that is not because there is a fault in the market system. It is a fault of the broader economic um, ills of the developing countries. I mean, it is arguable that for some developing countries, no price will be affordable for HIV, or no price might be affordable for any disease whatsoever. When you consider that some of those countries only spend $10 a year per patient on health care. On their way home, William and his father are accompanied by Martin, a sleeping sickness assistant at the hospital. William's family lives 25 kilometers away in a refugee camp. They arrived a few months ago after having fled from famine-stricken Sudan. It is these migrations caused by war and famine that have contributed to the resurgence of the disease over the past 20 years. William has all the symptoms of sleeping sickness. He's tired and extremely weak and suffers from sleep disorders, headaches and fever. Are you tired? I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm suffering. My body is tired. I'm not even able to walk. As you have stated, he is positive, and we have got him in stage two of the disease, which is the latest stage. So here we cannot delay with him, we want to take him for treatment. Because if we delay, he's going to worsen his life. That's why we have come to pick the attendant. Of course the father is going to attend the, the child himself. The father will be the attendant. He'll care for William, do the cooking and laundry during the 22 days of the treatment. Normal without the attendant, we can't give treatment because the drug currently for treating the stage two is toxic and any time the patient can react. Having collected some clothes and cooking gear, it's time to make the 25-kilometer journey back to the hospital. 
The world-famous Institute for Tropical Medicine in Antwerp, Belgium, is a suitable spot to meet with Dr. Giorgio Rossigno. He used to work...